I will drop a chalk. Mm -hmm. So the time I drop the chalk is what time? Zero. 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 All right. The time it hit the ground, what time? Zero. The final time, right? Mm -hmm. right? I want you to find the velocity of the chalk at 0.8 second. Okay? Zero. Two minutes. All right. I okay. Who has that? Okay. All right. Let's do that. Who has the who has the who has the timer? iPhone timer. Timer. Yeah. Okay. Two people do it at the same time. As soon as I release it, you hit. You hit three or four people. So we're gonna add them up, divide by four. All right. Because the human error. Okay. Three people. You you have a phone. So do it. Uh, if you know how to use timer. Okay. As soon as you hit the ground, what are you gonna do, guys? I'm going to stop it. All right. This is more distance. All right. Okay. Okay. Make it. Make it better. Make it better. Make it better. Okay. More distance. More distance means more time. Oh. Oh. Okay. Count down. Three to zero. Three, two, one. Zero. Oh. One second. Okay. One second. Okay. Okay. One second. Okay. Oh, one second. All right. One second. It could be one point one second. It doesn't matter. But one second. So it gives us some idea. All right. Is point eight smaller than one or bigger than one? Smaller than one. So I want you to find the velocity of the chalk at point eight second. Point eight second should be where? Point eight second should be where? Is it? Point eight second is here or somewhere very close to the bottom? Okay, so find point eight second. Velocity on the chalk at point eight second. Basically, we're gonna find something with just one piece of information that is the velocity is zero. I think I gave you a lot of information. Yes. Can we do anything? We have to use the mass. I don't know. What are you gonna use? I don't know. I don't know. I th I thought I, I I gave you more than. What's the height? Yeah, the I I don't need to give you the height. What's the angle? Really? I don't have to give you the angle. Calculus is so powerful. Yeah. All right. Since you guys are nice, I'll give you one more hint. I'll give you Galileo. How do you spell Galileo? I mean Leo. L L I Leo. It's a crime to misspell his name. So I I want to see. Okay. I gave you Galileo. Is it else? No. Alright. Alright. I give you half A T squared. Does that help? Yeah. And I'll give you A equal to 9.8. Alright, show me two minutes. Okay. I gave you too much. It's too much. You are okay. Okay. Chalk. 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 Find. Find the velocity. Instantaneous. Instantaneous velocity. At zero point. Uh, velocity at 0 0.8 seconds. Using um, <laughs> reference point is always t is equal to zero. No, but you're gonna see that now. All right. So algebra and calculus. So we're gonna do algebra here. We're gonna do calculus here. Calculus on the right hand side. All right. But at that time, I think earlier he had no idea about calculus, right? Because who invented calculus? Sir so Isaac Newton, all right, I'm going to tell you a magic, magic, magic number, 19, not 1942, 1642. 1642 is a magic number because ga, 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 <coughs> Galileo died, Galileo died, and Isaac Newton born. Isaac Newton born. This is a magic number, right? Same here, all right. This is the conspiracy of God. All right. Uh, 
โอเคสุดท้ายจากเราอ่า what are you gonna first do you gonna use um, f a t square uh, a is 9.8 meter per second every second meter per second is good meaning when you drop something it falls 9.8 meters per second every second does that make sense so that means the first second so second and velocity so the first second first second 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 third second first second is how much 9.8 second second 9.8 times and then times does that make sense to you okay so that's why the that's why if if you if you jump from here you will probably be okay but if you jump from empire state building you will probably not be okay because you're going to be hitting the ground with enormous velocity okay all right so now what we're going to do we're going to find the velocity uh, velocity at 0.8 second can you give me a number uh 0.8 second can you give me a, a two number which is very close to 0.8 second 0.8 two number 0 0.81 thank you who said that okay and what other number okay so 0.81 is on this side okay uh, what, what about 0.80 uh, okay 7.79 0.79 is that okay? Yeah. All right. Uh, what about we just call this one x and we call it 0.8. We can do that, right? Right? X is 0.80. Is it okay? All right. All right. Let's let's make it happen. What is uh, what is this then? Half 9.8 t square. That means 4.9 t square. Is that okay? 4.9 squared is okay. All right. So now d final minus d initial, t final minus t initial. Is that okay? Is that formula okay? Yes. The slope of algebra. So d final, d final is what? D final is 0 0.81. 0.81 in the function. 0 0.81 in the function. So 4.9 times 0. Uh, 0.81 square. Does that make sense? Yes? Yeah. Minus what? You tell me. What, what should I write? 4.9 uh -huh. 0.8 Okay, great. On the bottom, what should I write? T final minus T initial. Uh, 0 0.8 minus 0 0.8 Okay, very good. Okay, I give you two min uh, one, one minute to calculate that. Let's see who can calculate it faster. And that would be the inst almost an instantaneous velocity. Almost. Okay, who is ready? What is this number? People with the calculator, give me this number. 3.2. This is 3.2? Mm -hmm. Okay. 3.2 minus? 3.2. Huh? No, there has to be a difference. You have to take all the decimal point. I don't want to. You want me to take out my calculator? Uh, Three point one. Three point one. Three point one. What? Three point one three. Three point one three. Okay. Minus? No, that was. Uh, that one is three point two three. This one is. This one is three point two three. Yeah. And this one is. Three point one three. Three point one three. Divide by. Divide by an obvious number. What is that number? Zero point zero one. 
And what is that? Huh? Ten? Uh, you sure? You you sure you get that one? Four point nine. I want to I want to I want to get better answer. When you when you multiply, yes. This this is three point twenty one. You um you you you, you guys are not uh, taking it seriously, yeah. Three point one three six. Three point one three six. And this one? No. The second one is three point. Yeah, the second one is three point. Three point one three six. And the first one? Two one four eight. Yeah. Okay, I like the, I like that. Okay. Now the difference is difference is very tiny number. Point zero seven eight eight nine. Point zero seven eight eight nine. Very nice. And divide by what? Point zero one. And that gives you seven point. 7.88, 7.88 and 7.9 is not the same thing. Okay, so this is, I like that, much better. Please next time, please bring your calculator, this, this is one of the homework. All right, now we're gonna, what is, what is the instantaneous velocity? Algebra gives us, around, around right here. Around right here, what was the instantaneous velocity? 7.88, or eight meter per second, does that make sense? Now let's see how calculus is going to help us. I'm going to give you one, one, uh, one minute to do the cal calculus part. Go ahead, do the calculus part. Calculus. Is gonna be very close to seven point eight eight. Okay, who got it? You got it, okay. Help me out. What should I write? I should write maybe P of T? P of t is what? 4.9 t squared. Maybe I can write that. Okay, I can use power rule. Can I? Okay, okay. So tell me what should, what to do. What to do? Tell me. P prime of t is equal to. Two times 4.9 times t. Nine point eight T. What should I do now? Plug in T. What is T? Point eight. Point eight. Very nice. And that will be nine point eight times point eight. And that is how much? Seven point eight four. Why the calcul? Why why the algebra gave us almost correct answer? Is because do you see? Can you imagine that the process we used, the process we used, the algebra process we used, the slope? Why the algebra can, can who can explain why the algebra gave you almost, almost the accurate answer? No, that's not the reason, yeah. Because, um, getting the same one because you put point eight. No, I'm saying why it gave you almost the same. Because the bottom, it was close to 0.8, but it wasn't exactly 0.8. It was 0.81 minus 0.8. So that would be 0.1 plus 0.8. Yeah. Because you can't, you can't divide by 0. It's going to be a Very bottom. nice. Very nice. Okay. So that takes us back to what problem? The problem we saw on day 1 or day 2 maybe. Did cross a very good the law. Do you remember that? Okay, yeah, you cannot approach to zero. So what are you saying that the interval is very small? That's why the algebra is gave us a very 
close to a cube of something. Does that make sense? Can you make this interval even smaller? Yes. yes. Point eight and point zero 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 one. Would that be even closer? Can you make two point like that? Point eight and point eight. No. You cannot do that. But you can make it. What? What? What can you make it? One point seven nine 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 nine. The more nine you put, the the answer gonna move. Answer gonna be more closer to zero. More closer to not zero. The answer gonna be closer to seven point eight four. You cannot use the limit definition. You cannot use the power rule. You cannot use anything that you learn. You're gonna use a new approach, and that is called numerical approach. So you're gonna find. The new limit using the numerical approach, and that is you want to find the limit of p of t is equal to 40 over 3 t squared. How many of you remember this position function? Okay, only two people remember that. We made it so dramatic so that you remember it forever, but only two people remember that. Right. Okay, so this is the function we use second day, and we made it so dramatic so we used it long time. All right. Find the limit. Um, um, as t find limit. Find limit as t t approaches to one point two two. Okay. You cannot use the definition of, limit. definition of limit, and you cannot use the power rule. You have to do it numerically. Numerically. Okay. Numerically. Basically, the kind of technique we used like two seconds ago. All right. That process to where is the one? On the number line, what is it? where is the one? Uh, all right. On the number line, this is one, right? Right? You come from left to right, and you come from right to left. So this is your one. What is this number then? What is this number? Two. Two. How many number here? Infinite. Infinite. How many number here? Infinite. Infinite. So you approach from the left side and you approach from the right side. What is the number that is almost one from the left side? Tell me. So I'm gonna write this is I'm gonna write x approaches to one from the left side. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. X approaches to one from the left side. And then I'm going to write the function. What is the function? x minus 1 over x minus 1. What else I need to write now? x approaches to 1 from the? From the right side. I said this positive. Okay. So, what number? Okay, again, we have to put the root minus 1, x minus 1. Okay, great. Now, what is, what is the number very close to 1? From the left side. Um, okay. Point nine. How about point nine? Point nine. Okay. Which one is even closer to one? I think that's that's right. That's everybody would agree with that. Which one is even closer to point one? Okay, that's probably correct. All right. Now we're well, gonna do the same thing on the other side. Which one is very close to one from the right side? 1.1, one point, one point one, right? 1.1. One point one. Which one is even closer to 1? 1. 1.01. 1. And then? 1.001. 1. 1. Okay, I give you one minute. I made it so obvious now. Okay, great. 0 0.12 1 2 okay 0 0.12344 digit is okay 0 0.5001 okay magic 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 if you don't see the magic uh, then okay yeah go ahead 0 0.488 give me one more digit because we are using four digit after the decimal yeah what is it? Zero. Zero. Okay. 
Zero point? Zero point four eight. Four nine eight seven. Four nine eight seven. Alright, so limit as x approaches to one. The square root of x minus 1 over x minus 1 is what? Is what? 0.5. 0.5. Who said that? Who said that? Who said that? Oh, you said that? Yeah. Okay, 0.5. Yeah. Yes. I didn't get those numbers. I get other numbers. Is it similar to the other numbers? Yeah, you should get these numbers. Yeah. You should get these numbers. Okay. Getting those numbers is like is not calculus. Getting this number is fast, right? I just <laughs> that's the thing. Okay. All right. Okay. Getting this number is like you know knowing how to add. Uh, okay. Right. Now. Now what are we gonna do now? Okay. Does that make sense numerically? If you come from the left side, you approach what? Point five. You come from the right side, you approach what? 0.5. Well, how do you know 0.5? Is this approaching to 0.5? Yeah. That's what you look for. Is this approaching to 0.5? Yes. yes. Doesn't have to be 0.5. Is it 0.5? No. But is it approaching to 0.5? Yeah. Is this one approaching to 0.5? Yeah. That's our argument. So, limit as x approaches to 1, this is 0.5. Okay, great. Now, the one, the more exciting one is find the limit of p of t is equal to 40 over 3 t squared when t approaches to 1.22. In the mind, I gave you all the scenario. All the scenario means starting riding the bike one and a half hour long, seeing the speed limit sign 20 mile of the journey and the speed limit was 25 so everything should be in the back of your head now you're going to try to find what is the limit when t approaches to 1.2 by numerically okay go ahead say it again that help you that is story help you understand the calculus but you don't need to know that is story to find the answer that is to really kind of make it like important. Well, what is limit? 